All right. Thank you to our panelists. So I get the job of uh, closing out our uh, time together. Um, and throughout this summit, we've been polling our online audience to sort of get a sense of what, how their, um, their experience has been. And so I wanted to share a, a poll that we just, we just got the results. We asked them, what word encapsulates your experience at the summit? And the top three answers were urgency, insight, and community. And I think that's just terrific that so many of you feel like you've come away from um, your engagement with us um, thinking about the urgency uh, of, of climate change, um, the need to build community, and the importance of insight. Um, so now we're going to pull those of you in the room, too, so you get to be part of that experience of engaging with us. So um, raise your hand if you met someone new here at the summit. I think every hand is up. <laughs> um, for the hands raised, how many of you feel like you may not have met that person otherwise? Like this is a place you, that's amazing, terrific. Um, and I'm gonna ask one more question. How many of you learned about something that has inspired you or where you have a specific new idea or action that you wanna take in your own work? Awesome. This is, this is just like warms our heart. This is what we were hoping that we were able to create. So thank you all for participating in this journey with us. Um, I have the hard job of sort of reflecting on everything we heard over 22 sessions in two days, and that's kind of impossible. But I do think there are some threads that have um, um, gone through many of the sessions and many of our discussions. And I thought I would just highlight six of those for us. So the first thing is, and we heard in the fireside chat with Marsha McNutt, um, the importance of trust. Um, that the need for trust in each other and in science um, and that part of the reason and the value of these kinds of gatherings is they're a place we can build trust. Um, and we learned about who is trusted and why and how we need to build that trust. And that's so critical to what we are going to do going forward. So that's number one is trust. Um, number two, it's about the people um, and the importance of centering people and equity. And we heard that from NA, our National Academy of Mes Medicine president, Dr. Victor Zhao, who talked about the impacts of climate change on human health and on people. And we heard about how important it is as we do our work to be listening, as we define our research questions and we think about the actions, we need to be engaging with communities and really, really listening and understanding what their needs are. Um, and it's not just about inviting the communities to the table, um, but it's really about um, finding ways to build new tables together. So that's number two. Trust is number one. People is number two. Number three is systems. And we heard from our National Academy of Engineering president, uh, Dr. John Anderson, about how we're um, working in a systems of systems problem. And we heard again and again in our different sessions about all of the important interconnections, whether it be planetary health or nature-based solutions or transportation, that word systems came up over and over. Um, and so that what I found exciting about those conversations is sometimes it can feel overwhelming that there are so many things we have to try to keep in our head. But many of our speakers talked about the opportunity space when we're thinking about multiple kinds of challenges and problems together to have win, win, win kinds of solutions. So number three is systems. Um, number four, we've talked about um, some of the polarization um, and the inequalities in, in our um, society right now. Um, and often I found that our panelists were kind of gravitating to talk about the messy middle. Like we have a lot of people over here and a lot of people over here and they get a lot of attention. But really where we can all roll up our sleeves and address common problems is in that kind of messy middle. And I was really encouraged by how much room there is to engage between those polarized views. So number five is the, is the messy middle. Uh, or number four, sorry, I'm getting off my numbers here. Um, Number five, I think we heard a lot about scale and pace. And I, that's really, I think, one of the big, big challenges that we have to confront is how do we do the work at scale and at pace? And I don't think we quite have the answers for that, but that's the kind of stuff that we need to be really thinking hard about. Um, and then last, I, you know, I think you come to a climate conference and it's going to be, and even our, our last set of panelists mentioned, like, isn't it hard to work on climate change? You know, isn't it kind of overwhelming sometimes? But I feel a lot of hope in this room and during the summit. You know, I feel like there's a lot of hope because there's innovation. We heard in the AI and climate panel right off the bat, like there are ways that AI can be an accelerator for the good things that we want to do. 
Um, I think we heard hope that sometimes in crisis, that's where we get most of our, we get creativity out of those moments of crisis. And I think we're, we're seeing a lot of that coming together. Um, there's hope because there are people doing great work in communities and in our higher ed institutions and in labs and our companies and governments. We just heard so many great examples about good work that's going on. Um, we heard hope in the youth and the students and the young people who are um, energized to work on these issues. It's been so terrific to engage with some of the students and the young people here. Thank you so much for participating. Um, and then we heard that in a lot of ways, we have the know-how. We just have to get to work. And that's hopeful to me too. So those are my six takeaways. So trust, people, systems, getting into that messy middle space to roll up our sleeves, working on the scale and pace, and um, that really there's a lot to be hopeful for. All right, so next I want to take a minute to thank everybody who made this event possible. And we had a tremendous team working behind, um, uh, behind the scenes on things, and then so many contributions for those, from those of you who are here. So let me start by thanking the moderators and the panelists, um, both um, here in the main stage on the auditorium and in our concurrent sessions. You all did a terrific job. Really grateful for the time you took to prepare and the thoughtfulness with which you engaged in the conversations. Um, I want to thank the leadership here at the National Academies, our, our three Academies presidents, um, and to Greg Sims, too, our chief program officer, who've been incredible in supporting this effort and in participating in the summit. I'm going to thank our Climate Crossroads Advisory Committee members, um, especially those of you who moderated or participated in the discussions. Um, it's, as always, it's terrific working with all of you. And now I'm going to go through and name and, and thank personally a whole bunch of staff who've been working um, really hard to make this happen. So first of all, our amazing uh, core Climate Crossroad team, um, Amanda Purcell, Amy Mitsumori, Nikita Uberroy, Laura Lyon, Alex Reich, Hannah Blatt, Ryan Galash, and Joanne Morse. They make miracles happen. I literally told them like, hey, let's double the size here. <laughs> I told them I want to double over last year and they tripled, you know, like I don't even know how all these things happen and I'm just so grateful for have such an amazing group of folks to work with. Um, we have an amazing communications and production support for this event. So Eric Edkin, Nam Vu, Lindsay Moeller, um, Ben Ulrich and Sydney O'Shaughnessy who have been your voices asking the questions from the online audience and moderating all of that. Um, Hannah Fuller, uh, Mimi Kumanalis, and Sam Butler. Thanks to all of them for making sure that we have tremendous um, support here, um, both uh, in the live event and um, in the virtual event. Um, there are a bunch of other folks who have pitched in to make sure things run smoothly. We've grabbed staff from all over the academy, so thanks to all of them. I really want to thank uh, Megan Chamberlain, Jesus Romero, Elias Holland, Gotilia Brown, Josh Blatt, Brent Hurd, Kasha Kornetsky, Rebecca DeBoer, Jasmine Bryant, Carla Riley, and Andrea Dalligan. Thank you all for helping and making sure everything went smoothly these last few days. And then we have a whole nother group of staff who, and I'm not going to name them all because it would be, there's just too many to get through, um, who helped us organize and plan these sessions on the main stage, as well as many of the breakout sessions. And hopefully you've had a chance to interact with some of those folks over the last couple days. Um, we, they really just did a fantastic job and we're really happy to be able to support and showcase and uplift the great work that they're doing. Um, as I said, we had 22 sessions in total, so that's a, a lot of folks kind of pulling that together. Um, and then again, we had so many folks who participated in our showcase last night. Um, it was really great to see everyone there. 17 tables rep representing many, but not all of our programs or folks who weren't able to make it um, and who would have liked to be there. And so thanks to all of you for doing all that. And I'm going to throw in one little extra thank you, which is um, our first cohort of our Congressional Fellows um, finished their uh, program last night, um, and it was really wonderful to celebrate with all of you um, and, and to see many of you at the summit and asking questions during the sessions was terrific. Um, so thank you for those of you who participated in that program and for the staff who have supported that program. All right. Um, I next need to thank all of our donors. Um, so new engagement and partnership in, um, and donors are really vital to the development 
and the growth of Climate Crossroads. Um, we are very grateful to, grateful to the National Academy's presidents who have generously provided seed funding for us to get underway. Um, and I wanna thank all of the donors to the Climate Crossroads, including the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, um, uh, the Caldera Foundation, and the Arthur L. A. Arthur L. Day Fund of the National Academy of Sciences for the supporting this event specifically. Um, and we're also grateful to the funders for our Congressional Fellows Program, the Heising Simons Foundation, the Bezzy Fund, and the Platform for Agricultural Climate Transformation. All right, last but not least, thanks to all of you for taking the time to join us and for um, uh, really participating fully in, um, in, these, in these conversations. I do have like two slides to put up. Um, please, if we can ask one last thing, if you fill out our post-event survey, we really try to listen to every, all the feedback. We'd love to hear from you what went well, what we could do better next year, next year what other kinds of topics you might want to hear about. Um, if you like the kinds of things we're doing, we have a newsletter that goes out weekly. Please subscribe. You'll learn about Climate Crossroads, but really more, it's a, an opportunity to learn about all of the climate stuff at the academies. Um, of course, I hope we follow up on all the connections you made here. You can reach out to our team if you have other questions. Um, we also are um, kind of re-engaging more on, on social media here, so um, please follow us um, on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Um, and so you can keep up to date with all of the things that we're doing. Okay, so last comment. You know, it's been... Um, uh, really an incredible couple days. Uh, we didn't plan for it to be happening in the middle of a heat wave here. Um, but, you know, personally, I, you know, you can see that effects of climate change hitting home. Um, I'm a parent, and both of the days, I think every day this week, I've gotten notifications from our school system that all of their outdoor activities are canceled. Um, my husband sits on the board for our swim team association. They have to decide whether they're going to cancel an event for this evening. You know, these are kinds of day-to-day -day decisions that people are making and all of us are trying to sort of work on in our lives. Um, so it's really amazing to be able to come into a space like this and work together to and talk together about what we can do. Um, I challenged all of us at the beginning of each day or asked all of us to work together to create a space for candid and constructive and courageous conversations. Um, and I'm really delighted that everyone kind of rose to that challenge. So thank you. I encourage you to take what you learned and create these sort of conversations and spaces in all of the corners of the world where you work. So with that, thank you. Um, and we hope to see you next year.